Nice breeze, huh, Teresa? I, I ordered it up specially. I mean, you needed something to, to make it a little tough at top golf, right? Yeah, because it's hard when you hit those shots and it's windy and it goes left and right. Is that your question or no? No, that's not my question. So if Corey's around, that's not my question. Uh, why finish up this day? Is it just the, uh, taking him to top golf? Is the fact that the off season was as well as you would have hoped? Well, I think that what you try to do is you try to evaluate the, where the team is and you know, I, I believe this that that I don't think we're gonna we're gonna beat anybody on this last day, but I think that we could certainly lose lose to some teams by, you know, losing guys. And I think that's the biggest thing that you want as you come out of spring is you're just trying to improve, uh, but stay as healthy as you possibly can. And there's a fine line between that, and we we stress um, and we preach effort and finishing longer than the guy with the ball and going full tilt to the tackle and and all those types of things, but. You know, it's hard. I mean, it's hard that guys are competing for jobs, and I, I'm sitting here talking out of one side of my mouth to say compete, 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 finish, uh, but then stay up. How is the health of your team as you wrap up the offseason program, and how much healthier do you hope to be when training camp opens? Well, I think that we expect to be um, really close to, to full strength at training camp. Um, you know, a few guys may, may start the um, – the roster on PUP, and, and John and I will look at that and, and see where those guys are in, in 40 days or so, which, you know, we're going to bring in the rookies on July 22nd and the quarterbacks and, and some of those guys that weren't able to go through the offseason program on the 22nd. We'll start on the, the 25th with our veteran players. Uh, first practice will be on the 26th, and then our first open practice to our fans uh, will be on the 27th of July. Do you feel like you've got a better, this being a year into your tenure, do you feel like you've kind of got your arms around things more this time than you did this time last year? Well, I, I think that every year is a challenge, and every day uh, you, we as coaches or players, you know, we have to prove our value uh, to the organization and to this team. Um, you know, I think maybe I you know, may know where some of the pitfalls are and, you know, where some of the speed bumps are and navigate your way around them as it relates to, you know, now the next thing that's coming up is going to be training camp and how we handle you know, the schedule or maybe how we handle uh, days off or, or, you know, how we're trying to, what time we want to do the walkthrough and, and when do we want to practice and, you know, when do we want to go into the stadium to, to practice in front of our fans and, and do some of those things. Do you have a, a, some kind of talk that you give to the team as they leave, like the don't be that guy kind of speech? No, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, I, I've got kids, you know, I've got a son that's a sophomore in college, I've got a son that's a senior in high school. And I try to tell them the same thing, that the decisions and the choices that we make, the good ones, the bad ones, uh, they affect three groups of people. They affect ourselves, they affect our family, and they affect our team. So um, it's important that we make really good decisions um, as it relates to um, life, our family, what we're doing uh, when we're not working out, where we're working out, who we're working out with. So there's a lot of things that we talk to the team about. What can this team do over the next five weeks without your supervision that can maybe push them ahead of other teams? Yeah, you try to get as many guys that are self-motivated as they possibly can. I think that you don't worry about them so much in these nine weeks in a program. They're here. You know, We know when they're working out. We know that they're getting treatment. We know that they're studying. They're watching tape. They're doing all the things because they're here with us. And so I think as a coach, I've realized uh, that this is probably the – you know, one of the most stressful times for me is what those guys are doing when they're away from our building. And when they come back on the 22nd or the 25th, you know, we're going to have them again. But if a guy's out of shape, uh, we're going to have to get him back into shape and he's going to lose some practice time. And so that's, that's important time lost. And if a guy doesn't study some of the stuff that we, we covered and, and maybe improved on in the spring, you know, not that we're not going to go back and reinstall, but maybe we can go on to more details a little quicker if guys are staying up on on what they've done in the spring. You mentioned yesterday, I think, kind of an improvement in details you've seen maybe through the course of the off season. I think you, one example you had was just getting to the line, getting out of the, the huddle quickly. I wonder if there's anything else that comes to mind. In, in yeah, you time. know, I think that I used the example to the team this morning that, you know, the details, we that brings the picture to life. And the details, there's a playbook, and it has X's and O's, and it's got arrows. And, you know, if we always just ran the route or ran the defense, just like those arrows on the paper, None of us would be any good, and um, you have to bring it to life. Corey has to run a route that's you know, suitable to him and how he, you know, where the quarterback needs him. And then, you know, Kamale Correa, you know, ran a, a pass rush game with um, 
you know, I think it was, you know, whoever it was, it was an outside guy. And he did, you know, he kind of put his own little spin on running that pass rush game. And it wasn't just, you know, the way that we drew it up on the book. And I thought that was a great example. I, you know, I videoed it, sent it to Kamale the other night and said, hey, I, I, this is a really cool thing that we're going to be able to show the team about how you kind of put your own little spin on, on running this stunt. And he got, you know, he did everything that he was supposed to do. He was the first guy through. He was the penetrator. You know, there was a guy that was a looper. But it wasn't just you know, vanilla. How you like how <clears throat> Arthur handled the off season and, and put himself in position for the start of camp? Well, I felt like that, um, you know, the most important thing I think is the play call and most important play is the next play. You know, whatever happened uh, on that play or what's happening as that play is going, if somebody misses a block or somebody makes a bad read or we run a wrong route, uh, there's nothing that you can do as a play caller. You know, we have to get those things fixed. Uh, but the most important play is the next play as a play caller. And, and I felt like once we threw the scripts away and just went to call it, um, that we weren't, uh, there wasn't much delay. There wasn't much um, lag in between plays. I think we're just getting, being able to get the, the plays in and out. You know, there's no perfect play. You know, there's, there's good calls and, and bad calls, but there's no perfect call. Um, you have to get it in quickly and allow the players to, you know, adjust to it. And we try to, Whatever we call, if we call a cover two zone or we call an all-out pressure, hopefully we're playing with the same type of intensity um, regardless of, of what play is called. Did you feel the off-season program at least was last year good, this year great? Uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's something that has to be evaluated um, ultimately by wins and losses. And that's, that's really what this comes down to. Um, it, it starts with a belief. Um, you know, Talk to him about Draymond Green. You know, he said, I believe I'm the best player out there on the field, on the court, uh, every single time I go out there. Whether I am or not, I believe that I am, uh, and that's for somebody else to decide. And just like I told the team, some nights he is. You know, when he has you know, three or four straight triple doubles, uh, you could argue that you know, he was the best player out there. Um, so we, we have to start believing um, that we can do things better at a more consistent level. Because at times um, in the past, which not to sit here and dwell on the past, but there were times where we played pretty well, um, very complimentary football where we're getting stops defensively, we're scoring touchdowns, we're not kicking field goals. Special teams is you know, providing field position and, and we're feeding off of each other. And then there were other times where maybe one side of the ball couldn't get going or you know, we were li giving up long drives and, and the offense wasn't able to sustain it. So it's being able to find that consistency. Do you think consistency in the offseason is what leads to consistency in those kinds of I think of our daily leaders? approach, I think the way that I, I, ca I carry myself and, and the urgency in which we walk around the building, uh, the urgency in which we go into meetings and how we get on our practice field, the urgency in which we enter the, the weight room. Um, I just believe that winners um, carry themselves with a, with a bounce in their step. They, they move a little quicker. Um, you know, so I urge them all. If they go on vacation and you know, be, you know, go on a roller coaster ride, be the first, beat the guy next to you in line. You know what I mean? Like, my wife's always like, "Why? Why are you 20 yards in front of everybody?" I'm like, "Well, maybe you gotta catch up to me." You know, it's like there's, we're trying to beat this guy in line. So, you know, she's like, "What's the rush?" And I'm like, "I don't know, but it's it's something that we have to do. We have to all get up here and beat this other family in line." How how early in camp or? Uh, in practice, would you like to see, kind of know what your offensive line is going to be uh, for the opener? How, how quickly does that need to kind of shape up? For there's you? no timetable for me. You know, there's not. We're going to practice and we're going to have competition and we're going to, you know, by the time uh, we go to Cleveland, you know, in 87 days, we're, we're going to have, um, I know that what we feel like the best five guys starting and um, the, the most versatile guys um, backing them up. You know, so that we can have some versatility inside and guys can play more than one position. These rookies have had a chance to really get to know some of these guys now that have been on the team. How have they fit in with them the last few weeks now that they've been out on the field together? Well, we try to do our best to, you know, integrate them into the program. You know, it's, it's easier for these guys to lift in the morning and then they kind of have their own meetings. Um, with the, with the position coaches while the other group's lifting. And then they'll kind of come back and they'll be with, with everybody before we head out to practice. So I think that's been great. I think that they are receptive to you know, being coachable. And, and the best thing that a, that a young player can do is you know, know what he's supposed to do when he goes out on the field and play as hard as he can. And I think that's the easiest way to, to earn the respect uh, of a veteran player. That's, that's what a 
veteran told me when I was a rookie in 1997, and it's the same message I tell our guys. I mean, how beneficial is the time that they get after today? The more, more time they get in the building. The rookies with the rookies. Oh well, we have them. We'll have them for. Um, they'll lift tomorrow, and then uh, we'll finish up the program with them next week. And then it'll just be a lifting and running program. And then Chick, our player development um, director, will will finish up the the NFL program that they have with them as far as um, you know financial education and and all those things that are important for the transition to to the NFL. So it's going to give us a week with them, and then you know Frank and his staff will have them tomorrow and then next week, and they'll be able to get away from here. You anticipate having some kind of a scrimmage or practice at the stadium like like last year? We do, yeah. I think that that's set for August third. Is it's either the third or the fourth? The first that the first full Saturday. Correct. Okay. So I think it's maybe nine days into to camp. You approach that day differently this year than, than last year. As far as last year, I think it was maybe more of a, of a walk through. Yes. A so it wasn't wasn't something. a walk through, Jim. But I appreciate you. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a critical situation practice. Um, and again, a lot of those situations that we use in the game, I'll remind you, came up in the season um, that we were able to win games because of how well we played situations. So um, <clears throat> we're not going to go to the high school. Um, and again, Jim, what happened is when you go practice Friday night, um, these are NFL players. We can't have a two-hour scrimmage on a Friday night and come back and have a two-hour scrimmage on Saturday. Um, that just it's not something that we could have done. So we're not going to go to the um, we're not going to go to the high school this year, and we're going to go into the stadium and and hopefully, depending on the health. Again, I, I don't make the decisions on practice until you know sometimes the day before on what the health of the team looks like is that we could have somewhat a, of a scrimmage type setting in the stadium and then maybe try to recreate the, the situational um, practice that we had here um, following that, you know, back here. How important is it for a scrimmage like that to, to get the fans out? I know it's early in that, but in terms of building the fan base, getting them excited to have well, a scrimmage I, in the stadium. I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's amazing. And I think that the harder we play and the better that we play, um, the, the more fans will come out. And I think that, you know, I hear a lot of things about game day experience. And, uh, again, I played for Bill Belichick. And Bill Belichick said, hey, we got a life skills meeting at 4 o'clock with the NFL Players Association. And then he put his spin on it and he said, well, you know, let me tell you what's going to be the best for your life is going to be playing well. It's going to help you. It's going to help your family. It's going to help the team. And we all laughed because it's true. But, you know, we, we're going to try to give the best experience on a field that we possibly can. We understand it's never going to be perfect, uh, but if we're competent in what we're supposed to be doing, um, I, I know our guys are going to play hard, and that's the, that's the most important thing for me as, as a head coach. And I know that the position coaches will all coach technique and details, uh, but for me there's no greater compliment as a coach than when someone else in this profession says, man, your guys play hard. And you know, we might have beat you or you beat us, but you know, they play hard. And I didn't know that as a young coach until about my second year in, and somebody told me that, and I'm like, that's a pretty cool feeling to, to coach men and someone say, man, those guys play hard for you. Speaking of Belichick, what, what do you anticipate gaining from the two days of work that you'll have prior to the, uh, the, the preseason game? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, Bill and I will talk over the summer about, you know, what we plan to do and how much, you know, we want to we wanna practice as far as defensive calls. It may be base calls. It may be, hey, let's mix in pressure. You know, I don't anticipate it being open up the playbook and, and run every single thing um, that we have. But we've practiced against them in the past, and um, at least I have, and, and so pretty familiar with you know, how they do things. And I think that what you gain is you gain a, um, a you know, practice against a team that's, that's been at the top of this league um, year in and year out. Um, you know, it'll be a great opportunity for our defense um, to play against you know, a challenging offense with, with really good players. And, um, it allow our offense to, to work against a multiple defense other than ourselves. And you just see different faces and, and different people. You're not blocking and, and trying to cover the same people over and over. How much are the, are the Browns on this team's mind already? I mean, I, I know you've got a training camp you go through preseason, but is the work already st started? Well, I think the work always starts. I think um, there's a fine line at, at what you worry about, your, your what you're doing, and then, and then there's a other other line on the other side that – you know, what's the other team doing? And so right now, I would say that the majority of everything that we do 
um, is based on, especially for the play at the player level, is based on what we're doing. Um, there may be some, you know, internal discussions by coaches on on what you know the Browns have done in the past. Um, but again, you know, opening day, you know, the, a lot of things can happen, and a lot of a lot of plays will be new uh, on both sides of the ball. Social media getting bigger and bigger each year. I wonder if you advise guys about do's and don'ts on social media or does that come under the decisions and choices kind of thing that you're no i mean i'm always probably um trying to advise on on things that i think are are positive you know i think that it it, it's not going anywhere it's here to stay it's part of everybody's life and if we can always find a way to make it about the team or make it about whatever charity you know they're trying to promote um as opposed to you know some self-serving perfect world that they live in that that everybody in social media uh, tends to think and I think that's you know again I, I have a, a high school senior and when you're on social media you know it's everybody's perfect the girls are prettier uh, every kid has a scholarship to the best school uh, and and every wife has no issues at home and every husband makes a lot of money and is a good golfer on social media so <laughs> life is perfect but we all know that that's not the, that's not the case. That's not true, uh, and so you fight that battle. And so you just want to be uh, tell our players, hey, listen, man, make it about you, make it about the team, positive things. We do so much in the community um, that I, that I'm proud of that we that our players should should use that as a platform to to promote those charities. You said to Marcus, how much does using the cross sports help the message hit? And then where did you get that from? Um. Well, I get it because uh, apparently, I don't know, five or six years ago, my wife enjoyed uh, the Warriors. You know, they were playing the Heat when we were at the Orange Bowl. I surprised her because I was working, and so I surprised her with tickets to the Heat when LeBron was with the Heat, and there was a fledgling team called Golden State. And she's like, David Lee, this was when David Lee was apparently good, and she's like, <laughs> David Lee is, uh, this guy is amazing, and she's like, they had this other guy that just ran around and shot threes. His name was Steph Curry. And so she's liked them, but we always call her front runner now. But she's liked them since I was at Ohio State, and I and I got her tickets, and because I felt bad because we were working. Um, and so she's like, "Did you see what Iggy said about uh, Steph and why he plays hurt and why he plays um, when he's banged up? And it's for you know his teammates." So I thought that that was just a great message to to show our team about here's a veteran player that that doesn't play 40 minutes a night, that probably doesn't feel great, but he does it because. Um, of this guy named Steph Curry, who's a teammate. And then, you know, just obviously Draymond, you know, whether I, I, I like him, you know, I, I think that I just joke with her, but she's like, you know, that's how you would be. You'd try to antagonize every person uh, on the court and, and try to get as many technicals as you could. So um, I appreciate, you know, some of these guys' comments and they're, they're world champions. They won a championship in their sport, and there's a lot to be learned. Um, from their mindset and, and what their makeup is. Who had, who had the – who had – go ahead if it's the last well, one. You made a big deal That's last year about a certain game going up to Marcus before the game and saying, I'm excited to watch you play. Yep. Now that you've been with him for two off seasons and a full season, how excited are you for him for this upcoming season? I, I am. I'm extremely excited. And I think that a lot of these guys that have tried to make improvements and try to change their body, like I'm, I'm excited to see what Rashawn Evans does in his second year and Harold Landry and watching these young players uh, blossom. You know, they asked me last night at our charity event for, for the Titans at the stadium, um, Mike Keith asked me who I was excited about. I'm watching these young guys. They're, they're going to compete and, and push these veteran players. That's the life of the National Football League. And, and seeing where they go from here until we play the Steelers uh, week three of the preseason and, and see where that you know, transition is as players to this league and see if we can count on them. Uh, going forward to, to, to contribute to the football team. Thanks, guys. Have a great summer. Going to miss you guys. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs>